Hello everyone, welcome to the tutorial for slicing. Uh, the slicing module is something I added for myself because I had a little project that I needed slicing for, but I found it very useful uh, in order to import STL objects into other CAD programs. It's always been a problem in Gerotic if somebody had a gear or, uh, or an object. Um, they could import it as an STL into their CAD programs, but STLs don't allow for very much manipulation. It's a non-hierarchical uh, form of storage. Uh, slicing an object, however, makes the data hierarchical. It, it allows a program to see exactly where each point belongs uh, in the context of a structure. So slicing can be very handy. For our first example, I'll load up uh, Headley here from our screen. Each of you has this STL. It's called compass.stl in your Gerotic folder if you wish to load him. Um, once you load an object, we can see some information on the side of the screen telling us uh, what size that object is, what its bounds are in memory. Uh, this has been tested both in metric and standard, by the way, so you shouldn't have any troubles. Uh, the second you load an object, there's a load STL button down here on the bottom. Um, the object will appear on the screen and the data uh, on the screen will show you um, what his size is, but the slice thickness will also be set to a parameter equal to 100 slices for whatever object you load. Uh, if you push the slice button, you'll find that uh, the object slices. And if we look at this guy carefully, uh, you can see now that he is built of contours. The front of his nose has a ring and the rings get bigger as he goes back. It's because we sliced in the direction that uh, the object that the object is facing. In other words, uh, we're looking straight at the object, so we sliced inwards um, that way with 2 millimeters, 2.2 millimeters in this case, per slice. Um, we can scale this object. You'll see a slider down here at the bottom saying proposed scale. And as we slide it back and forth, the numbers change on the x, y, and z size. Uh, you can also type a number into any one of these um, X, Y, and Z settings. So you can say I want the X, for example, to be 100 millimeters, and you will the uh, Y and Z will change numbers to show you what that would mean in terms of uh, that size. Uh, if you then hit scale, the object will scale, and you can see that now we are uh, a different size if you look at the numbers on the side. We have an aspect lock there, which you can turn off, which means that you could uh, change an object or rescale an object to be uh, wider and skinnier and thicker. Uh, this guy's starting to look awful funny because I've uh, more than doubled his his size. Uh, you can always uh, scale them back uh, as long as you understand what your scaling numbers would be. Since I've totally screwed him up, let's load him up again. Again, the compass is in your folder. This should load any STL uh, image that you have. And once you have sliced the object, you can look to see uh, what it's going to look like with this slider at the bottom, which you can slide through and see each one of the contours. Um, all of these contours should be closed, and there may be multiple contours on a particular slice. And it's a good idea to look through and to make sure that there's no aberrations and that nothing has gone wrong. There is an animation button on the screen which you can hit, which will cause the... Um, display to animate and quickly loop through all its slices. It's a good idea to watch it just to make sure no degenerative condition has caused any uh, problems. Uh, the algorithm seems pretty stable and I haven't really had any uh, any problems occur but again it's a good idea to loop through and watch. Now in addition to that we have the cumulative button which will allow you to watch the image being built from its slices to give you a better idea uh, as to whether any errors occurred. There are two ways uh, to put out the data in terms of its origin. You can have it barycentric, in which case we're going to uh, make all the objects uh, central, uh, an average center. So you can be sure that we're going negative in the x direction to the left and positive in the x direction to the right, etc. Uh, the other way is 0, 0, 0. If you use a, an origin of 0, 0, 0, it will be uh, the lowest x, lowest y, and lowest z. This is the type of slice output that you would use for a 3D printer, for example, so that everything fits on its bed. Uh, when you start an animation, if I click animate here, we'll see it's animating again. And when you start it, if you slide your uh, mouse over the slider or hit any controls, the animation will stop. This is just to stop any 
uh, drag on your computer. And while you can rotate your object around to look at it from different views, uh, the simulation will not rotate. It's showing you exactly how the data will be reinterpreted to a flat plane uh, for its slice output. Now in order to slice from a different direction you can use the buttons on the top of the screen to set default um, orientations. Here you can see I turned them to the left and re-sliced them and now you can see all our slices are from that side. And If we look at them straight on you can see each of the slices. Uh, we'll animate that so that you can see that he's building on the side. Now you can go to an arbitrary uh, rotation as well rather than just use the ones on the side. Just keep in mind that whenever you hit the slice button you're actually slicing straight in on the screen. So if I was to turn the tip of his forehead towards the screen and slice uh, you'll see that we now are slicing in on that orientation and on that plane. And there is your simulation. Now you can put this out as a 3D DXF and it's a new type of 3D DXF in that um, the contours are all properly connected and on different layers. This means a 1DXF file can be loaded into SolidWorks or um, Rhino or other CAM programs um, and you should be able to remesh that object to be a very fine resolution. Because you can select the size of your slice thickness you're really not limited to anything and you can get um, pretty much any resolution that you want uh, on any object. As a final example here is a bevel gear on the screen. It's one of our standard bevels and the bevels of course are always the hardest thing to get to machine and the hardest thing to get into another CAM program. This makes it much easier uh, if we slice this bevel up and by the way the more data is that is in an STL the longer the slicing process takes. Uh, you're gonna find my gear objects are very high resolution objects and they can take quite a bit to uh, to slice but if we look we can now see the slices on the object uh, you can see that there are 100 of them. We've sliced it on the uh, straight in plane that we were on when we started and if we animate uh, you can see the object building on our side screen. Those are the contours coming out that define our bevel gear. Um, might be better if I turn off cumulative and we cycle through and you can see that the contours are very all well well defined uh, closed contours with no jagged peaks or noise in them and that's usually the sign that things are working well. So take a look through it when you're um, when you've sliced something. Take a look through it to make sure that everything looks good to you. And then hit your DXF out button and you can uh, and it will save itself into your project file under the uh, STL object's name. Most STL objects have a name in them. There is one other area which is really not for the user. It's something uh, I put in for myself, but I left it in just in case anybody else wants it. Once you have an object, say uh, this bevel for example, once you've sliced it once, uh, a database has been filled with information about it. And I wanted to uh, cut objects into decks of playing cards, so I added playing card output to the side. There's two buttons. One is analyze scale, and when you hit it, uh, the object will automatically scale itself to be the right size to be cut into a deck of cards to be used as a mold so that you could uh, um, pour one of these out of wax or something. Uh, and then there's a button for G0, G1 code. If we push it, it will put out uh, G code, which is meant for Mach 4 and my laser uh, to uh, cut these objects. My laser only cuts on G1s, not on G0s, so I can simply put it out as a huge list of G0s and G1s with M0 statements in between each slice. That way my laser can cut a slice, it stops, I change the playing card, and I cut another slice. I'll post some photos of uh, what we've cut out of decks of playing cards on the uh, website. Uh, in the meantime, I guess that's about it. All, that's about all you need to know in order to uh, slice up any object you want to any orientation and import it into your favorite CAM program. Thanks and have fun.